In a recent video, we tested duct tape and saw there's a huge difference between different name brands. And hundreds of you asked me to test super glue. Does name brand matter when it comes to super glue? Or are all name brands pretty much the same? Now, one thing I can say about some of these brands is they make some pretty bold claims. In fact, the original super glue says that one drop can lift a ton. That's quite a bit of weight for one drop, and I'm not sure if it can or not, but what I do know is we've got a bunch of testing to do, so let's get the testing underway. I'm not gonna go through the safety data sheet for all of the different super glues, but I just wanna show that these super glues are all different in their own way. This is Loctite super glue. As you can see, there are two different ingredients. The main ingredient for all super glues is the top ingredient. If you're interested to know more about each of these ingredients, look up the cast numbers online. You can get a lot more information. This is Gorilla, and you can see it's between 85 and 100% of ethyl cyanacrylate. And this is a safety data sheet for the original super glue. And you can see, again, there's a couple of different ingredients in this one. So when it comes to using any sort of glue or epoxy, surface prep is absolutely the most important step. So the first thing we're gonna do is sand down this piece of angle iron and make sure that we're sanding it in the same exact direction so we have a consistent surface. So these are the instructions for the original super glue. It's not recommended for wood, leather, or porcelain. However, it is supposed to be good to use on metal and plastic, as well as rubber. We're gonna be testing out both metal and plastic today. We're not gonna test rubber. So the reason I labeled these pipes and I also drew the line is so that when I reattach these two together using super glues that they are indexed and they are in the exact same spot they were in when they were cut. This ensures that we have almost a perfect surface with very little gap in there and it'll give every product an equal chance to succeed. So the longer portion of PVC pipe, I've weighed each of them. They all weigh right at one pound. This is all inch and a half PVC. So what I'm going to do is apply the PVC glue to the top of each of the shorter pipe, and then I'm going to rest the longer pipe on top to apply one pound of downward pressure. So it's not good to use brake cleaner because it can leave micro fractures in plastic. So instead, all I'm going to do is use a paper towel to try to wipe up any sort of residue or dust. I'll do this for each piece, and then we'll go ahead and glue these. Okay guys, we're gonna let this glue cure for 24 hours and we'll be back to test it. So before I begin testing, just a quick review of what I've done. I sanded the steel and I sanded the heads of each bolt. Then I cleaned everything with brake parts cleaner. Then I went ahead and applied the super glue and it's been right at 24 hours since I applied the super glue. So all the super glue should be fully cured. So there are two different types of tests I wanna to run today and I'll run a third one if I don't mess up on one of the first two. The first test involves a downward force. Um, I've been advised by a lot of you out there that are experts in the field of doing this sort of testing to use newtons instead of pounds or kilograms. So I'll begin by using the downward force test using the middle bolt first. Once we test the middle bolt as far as the downward force, we're going to move on and measure the ability of super glue to stand up to a twisting force. And I have a third test that I think is going to be very interesting if I can get to it without messing up on one of these two tests. So some technical details, these are 5 16 inch bolts. The head of the bolt is a half inch. 
This is right at four inches in length. The amount of force I'll be applying will be applied almost at the four inch mark. We just finished measuring the ability of superglue to handle a downward force. Now we're gonna measure the ability of superglue to handle a twisting force. I'll be using an inch pounds wrench, not a foot pounds wrench. If we need a bigger wrench, we can go to it. But we'll begin with 10 inch pounds and incrementally add five inch pounds until each one of these lets go. So up next we're going to measure tensile strength. I came up with a jig to accomplish this task. This is not the perfect test, but it should do. It'll give us a fairly accurate comparison. This is a pitman arm puller. I went ahead and took part of it out, but this pitman arm puller is going to slide right over top of the bolt. The nut that's on the bolt will keep this centered up, so we have a center point. Then I went ahead and put together a jig. This jig has a hole in one end, which I'll use for the scale. This is the hole that will go over the bolt. I went ahead and ovaled out this hole so that as I'm applying force, it's not going to twist on the bolt. Now this gives me a 20 to 1 mechanical advantage over pulling on the, the bolt directly because there's no way I'd be able to pull up a thousand pounds or two thousand pounds worth of force. So what I'll do is I will slide the lever over top of the bolt, I will attach a nut to the bolt, and then when it's, when it's fairly tight, what I'll do is... I will attach the scale and I will pull up on the scale, pull on one end until this breaks free. And that'll give us a fairly decent tensile strength measurement. So the next test, I'm gonna measure the ability of these super glues to stick to plastic and measure how much strength they have. So what I'm going to do is use a 25 pound plate and begin one inch out from the cut. And I'm gonna to continue to move little by little and I'm only gonna leave it in place for maybe a second or two and continue to move all the way out until this breaks. So there's a black line on the pipe which indicates the depth at which this pipe should stay. I don't wanna go any farther than that because then the pipe will actually be beyond the cut. But I want to be very close to the cut and I want to provide a consistent amount of support for each of the pipes that we test. So we're going, to, we're going to test in order. We're going to test with Elmer's first. So what I'm going to do is just slide the pipe over until it reaches the, the line. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the 25 pounds and gradually slide the weight out until the pipe breaks.
Okay, so Loctite's the only pipe left that survived the entire round. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some more weight. I'm gonna add a five pound plate to the 25 for a total of 30 pounds. Okay, I'm just adding a 10 pounder for a total of 35 pounds. I'm gonna start about midway out since we know that it can take it. Okay, 40 pounds, we're going with 40 pounds. So when it comes to super glues, ingredients matter. As we saw, these products contain different ingredients which have an impact on how they work depending on the type of material and the type of force that's being applied. I'd really like to know your opinion. Which product do you think won the competition? As far as steel is concerned, what we saw was three different name brands came out on top in different categories. Regarding plastic, it was very clear that Loctite came out on top by a far margin. Very impressive. Just as a reminder, I'm not sponsored by Loctite or any of these other manufacturers. My objective is to test products, determine which ones work for you guys. You guys asked me to do this test, so I did it. Anyway, I had a lot of fun doing this video. Please let me know what other ideas you have and other products you want me to test. As usual, just want to say thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you'll like, share, and subscribe. Please take care, and I look forward to seeing you next time.